My name's Fan, I'm from the Benjamin Britten High School and today we've been at the Norwich Record Office learning about um, the First World War. We've done lots on the computers, looking at old records and gone through old record rooms looking at different kinds of how they died and all about soldiers. I've never visited the record office before but I think it's quite interesting to see how many records they've actually got down in the strong room and that they've had to like put them in special boxes so they don't rot away and things. Um, I found it quite interesting that a lot of illnesses caused death because they weren't as advanced in the medical fields. When I look at some of the records it makes me feel like more with the history because when you look at it in books you just sort of see that somebody did this but when you see who they were and what they did it sort of makes it feel more real. I really like the tour of the archives because we got to learn loads about all the original old documents and it was very interesting to see how things progressed over the war. Things in here that are interesting, that's really unique to Great Yarmouth Library and, well, it's a unique document that we've got in here related to World War I, is this over here. So we have these um, volumes. This is the Great Yarmouth Record of the Great War. So Great War is what we now call World War I. Yeah? Um, and in here are all the people who served from this area, from Greater Yarmouth, in that war and it, you know whether they lived or died and if they served in the forces or the you know any of the forces. Most about the archives was seeing the insurance to do with all the old houses and it was a big map of Yarmouth and they uh, copied over it when there were things made to the houses after bombings and how it was rebuilt. Martha. Martha was 70 years old and she'd been shopping she, and she was just coming home from the shops which seems unusual at 8 o'clock at night but we're going back 100 years and probably people did things differently and she was coming around this corner and just as the blast bombs came and she wasn't hit directly by a bomb but she was hit by shrapnel she could potentially have been hit by something from the church perhaps or from these houses that you can see were so badly damaged um, and she was killed instantly. At the time and tide we had an interactive history lesson where we got to learn about nurses and flight pilots and the soldiers in the trenches. It'll protect you from shrapnel hanging off the outside. But is it a question? Many of the question is. I learned that in the trench it was really hard and I learned about all the different weapons used and how they got gassed and the food they had and how bad it was. I liked um, being in the trenches and using the Lee Enfield rifle, um, seeing how quickly you could cock it in four seconds. So, are you all patient with people? You're all very quiet, you're not very enthusiastic. My goodness, we need enthusiasm in our, in our hospitals. Well, um, so are you, are you patient with people? Are you, um, could you be caring when it comes to poorly ill soldiers who... No. You couldn't be, you couldn't be patient? No. Oh my word, you've got no time for a poorly person. Yeah. Oh, okay, wonderful. Well, well. could be subject to a discipline if you, um, if you get any creases in this bed. High standards in my ward, please. Hospital corners to make sure they're neat and tidy. Wonderful. I learnt to be a pilot this morning. It was alright to do because I got to shoot people with a water gun. 
to do the targets. However, one mechanical fault, which were very common, and you'd shoot your own propeller off. Not fun, not fun. But to begin with, you would be shooting the enemy. And like I said, you'd have to line them up in your sight right here. It's leaking, so like any good World War I pilot, you're gonna take some friendly fire. Are you ready? Okay. Everyone brace yourselves. We're going in. Get your screams ready. Whatever you've got to say. Last prayers. One, two, three. They're backing away. They're backing away. The Huns have lost their nerve. We've shot down their captain and they've turned tail and fled. We've saved Yarmouth. No, we've saved the entire country. And you, 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 all of you, especially you, Bob, couldn't have done it without you. You're all famous as anything. You can go home now. And there's a commission waiting for you in the Royal Flying Corps. Now try and get that, that internal. So no more moving around. Don't move and don't click or tap your foot. Just stay very still and we'll have that inside. Close your eyes. I am James Small. I am part of Flag High School and I play the trumpet. Um, hello, my name is Jodie Wiggins and I'm part of Fleg High School and for this project I'm going to be singing and today has been absolutely amazing, I've loved every minute of it. Today's session has gone really well, the progression from the beginning to end was immense, it was r there was such a difference from the simple clapping that we were doing at the beginning to some of the kind of complex works we were doing with everybody joining in on their instruments. I love the sort of freedom of it because we've been able to improvise and go through step by step and layer to make something absolutely amazing. I mean, the end product was just, it sounded so, it, it was just amazing. Like, like, there's no words to describe how good it was. My name is Madison James and I'm from Great Arms Charter Academy. Today I've been uh, playing the piano and I've learned some new chords and we've been playing with the voices in training. I've enjoyed the experience by learning new things and taking part with other players. Hi, my name is Finn, I'm from Trafalgar College. We've been doing music, songwriting, and having a very nice time. My name is Colin Goffin and I'm the Vice Principal at Trafalgar College in Great Yarmouth. The session today actually has enabled them to work on a number of areas. I mean, one of the things they're looking at is different writing for purposes and sort of how they're working with different audiences. Now, so obviously that helps them with their, just their English and how they're working on that. 
What Rachel has asked me to talk to you about today is the process we use to write text in museums. Talk to you about some of the techniques we use um, to make the text as exciting, as interesting, for as many people to read it as possible. My name is Julian Gallagher. I'm a history teacher here at uh, Benjamin Britten Music Academy. Well, I think the uh, children should benefit from this session because they haven't ever really thought about perhaps how history is written and produced. They tend to just you know, read it and have things given to them in the classroom and never actually think about how those historical sources come about and now they're actually actively taking a part in writing some history. So what we're going to do first is something called free writing. It's um, a bit like a sort of brain vomit onto the page really. Um, I'm going to give you the start of a line and I'm going to time you and you've got two minutes to just put your pen to the paper and keep writing. And no matter what happens, you keep writing. Sort of a boyfriend or someone yeah. that the mother might think is less important. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, hi. Cool, yeah. sounds like you're on it. Go for it. If you're flying in the air, that, that could be quite difficult. So what you're going to need to do is think a lot about all five of your senses. So what, what this person might be able to see, what they might be able to hear or smell, or what sensations they might be experiencing. A rush of anxiety came to me. I opened my eyes to another dull morning, wondering whether my loved ones are okay. A thought entered my mind. There he was, my brother, standing right in front of me. You will start off in the friendly trenches where mud will fill your boots, up the ladders to no man's land, then try to avoid the hail of bullets and artillery. The thought in my mind will probably never go away until they return home and are safe. So my name's Diana. My name's Bobby. And we're from Edward Wellage Ormerson Academy. We'll be singing Lux at a Turner and there'll be 200 other primary children singing it with us. So with this piece of music I've learned that you can have a very low uh, a couple of high notes but also a couple of low notes and you'd also have to use like steps of your voice to get it right and correct. I'm really looking forward to working with a, like, really professional people and the BBC Orchestra. Uh, I'm really looking forward to working alongside with Sarah Freestone and performing in front of lots of people. Lovely.
Hi, so here we are in Great Yarmouth. This is the big day, the orchestra all set up behind me and we can't wait to get started. Being here today feels absolutely amazing because this is going to be the very first time that all the various and many strands of this project are coming together. I can't quite describe how excited I am about this performance and this project has been fantastic to work on. I've really, it's been a very personal project, not just for me, I think for absolutely everyone who's been involved. Uh, and I am extremely proud of all the work that the young people have done on this. They've done amazing things. I'm just really looking forward to them sharing everything with you. That's a way to remember, a commemoration of the Great War. I sit in the trench, I think to myself about what I'm missing at home. My mum's amazing cooking or working in the shed with dad. The enjoyable times we had sitting around the fireplace telling our jokes. It all seems a distant memory since I signed up two years ago. Oh, how I love the family business. I think about how I hate the thick mud. Now, in a minute, we're going to hear from our first school band, Flag High School and they're going to play a piece written all about the sea. was just 16 when he walked off to war. Tall for his age, scrawny, like his father. He walked off to the train with his head held high and his boots too big. And when he got to the train, he looked back at me and smiled me with that stupid, lopsided grin of his. But then for a second, his face changed. He looked older. Serious somehow, but then the grin was back and, and he blew me a kiss. He's never done that before. And now he went again. If he'd lived and come back to Yarmouth, he'd have perhaps been a father. A grandfather. 
That chance was stolen from him and from me. But some did come back. Not everyone comes home, though, of course. 1,472 all in. They all started right here in Great Yarmouth, our home. The end result is, is absolutely awesome. I think the, the score that Sarah has um, composed really encapsulates um, the kind of things that we wanted to, to represent the pain and the suffering, but also the uplifting side of, of a community that lived through the First World War. It's a combination of lots and lots of hard work. Everybody's learned a whole new load of skills, but tonight is a big celebration of all the hard work they've done. I think for the pe people and their children of Great Yarmouth, this is a really exceptional opportunity to um, work alongside world-class musicians, to research the stories of what you know, their, their ancestors did in the First World War. Um, well, it's been amazing working with such a big orchestra, and it's quite overwhelming when you're sitting there and you're listening to this massive sound that they make, and it's lovely to hear and really inspiring for the younger children especially. I'm playing in the first violin, sort of accompanying the choir and, and the, the whole experience. I will really take away the memories for the future, hopefully playing in an orchestra is something that, that I can do in the future and this day has been really helpful to sort of experience that. The best bit was probably doing all the research and learning about all the stories from it, like the Captain Cadbury story. I'm excited to be part of something this big, to like remember everyone who fought for us.